Hey, Matt, you want to talk about the liberal media? Yeah, I want to know why you think that it's not liberal. Well, actually, no, I don't know. I don't want to know. I, it's I, not that I, I don't it. think it's. I, it's not that I think it's not liberal. It's that I think it is heavily conservative, heavily conservatively skewed. Look at just the percentage of people who show up on Meet the Press as guests. Republicans, overwhelmingly. When it was during the Bush administration, they said, well, it's because Republicans are in control. Uh, you know, we need to put more of them on. And then during the Obama administration, and even when the Republicans were not in control of the House, they said, well, we've got to have more Republicans in because they're the opposition. Democrats are in control. I'm not making this up, by the way. You can go back and check it out. Sure. Um, well, I guess I have more of a problem with what you were just saying as far as how you can tell that the liberal media, or the media is not liberal. What makes you think the media is liberal? Well, I mean, I can, I can cite an example from, from last night. Uh, Obama okay. goes on, or I think that might have been more than last night, but Obama goes on Jay Leno and says that, um, you know, hey, we're, we're widening the Panama Canal, deepening it and widening it so that these bigger ships can come in. And if we don't, um, he said that if we don't widen and deepen our ports in the Gulf, such as, and then he went, I don't know the exact ones, but he went to name a bunch of ports in the Atlantic, right. and nobody called him on it. In fact, there was a liberal media site who, um, and I think it was a newspaper, I'm not sure, you might want to look it up, but there was a, a newspaper article that talked about his quote as how smart he was in, in his foresight, and instead of railing him about mentioning these Atlantic ports and calling them Gulf ports, they inserted a word that uh, he said, like. So these, the, the ports like, uh, and, then the, and then they went to mention well, the Well, is the uh, Gulf of Mexico ports. not in the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, uh, no, it is. But the, uh, like, Jacksonville is not a Gulf port, which he mentioned as it being a Gulf port. Oh, because it's uh, on the Atlantic side of Florida rather than the Gulf side of Florida. Okay, yeah. and you so, think that that's proof that we have a liberal media that they didn't call him on that? I think, frankly, the fact that you know, we, the when he said that, uh, and by the way, Jay Leno show is not the news media, but it's, it's our entertainment media. But nonetheless, I think that you know, when he said that, or if the news had covered it, if we had a liberal media, they would have said. You know, why do we want to increase our ports and thus the amount of stuff that we're importing into the United States from, from low-wage countries when we should be bringing our jobs home and manufacturing things here? Yeah, that, no, that, that wouldn't happen. Um, and no, I it wouldn't Jay happen Leno's because we don't have a liberal media. Jay Leno's not the media, which is another um, question as to why the first time he spoke about, um, you know... Well, Jay Leno's had every president on as long as he's been doing that show. I mean, that's just a regular venue for presidents. George Bush used to go on right. there. Both George remember, Bushes Remember how on. much everybody made fun of Sarah Palin when she said that, they said that uh, she could see Russia from her house? Yeah, because it's a stupid the thing to say. About that is she, the funny part about that is that she didn't even say it. Okay. It was Tina Fey as Sarah Palin who said it. Okay. But, but no, this is the thing is that... But I don't, and, I don't, I don't recall any news... Well, here, this is the real reason I called, is that your assertion that all of the things that you mentioned that people would know mm -hmm. if the, the, the media was liberal? Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, the arrest rate, the, uh, the uh, incarceration rate, that stuff. The, your, your assumption is flawed because you're, you're assuming that people actually watch the media. People don't care. They don't watch. They, uh, I, um, I've, I've Actually, I think they would. I think that, that, you know, Americans would. And, and uh, let me give you another example. This, this one hit me this morning. I was reading this article in the New York Times. And uh, actually, I was reading it on my phone, so I don't know where it is in the actual physical New York Times. But it's on the front page of their electronic section. And it uh, started right out, first paragraph, Governor Rick Scott down in Florida is trying to purge his voter rolls of, of uh, people who are not citizens. And he's not. He's trying to purge his voting rolls of people he says are not citizens. And the first time he tried this, he said there were about 180,000 people who were not citizens when they, and these were all people who had Hispanic surnames, when they started looking seriously, or the vast majority of them, when they started looking seriously at these numbers, they whittled it down to 2,000 people. 
Then they contacted them and they whittled it down to 200 people. And ultimately, they found 40 people who were on the voter rolls, who, by the way, none of whom had voted, who were not citizens. So you've got 40 people in the entire state of Florida. That's not going to turn an election. And those people are all now eligible to go to prison. So now he says he's going to do it again. What, what gets buried in these stories, and it's always buried in the last couple of paragraphs, is that the way that he's going to do this is he's going to send a postcard to everybody in Florida who has a Hispanic surname that says, if you don't show up at this address at this time within the next X number of weeks with proof that you're a citizen, if you don't take off work and come down here and show us, then we're going to automatically remove you from the voting rolls. Now, this is called caging. The Republican Party has done this for years. They've been operating under a restraining order since the 1980s, since Paul Weyrich was adver- you know, advocating this stuff during the Reagan administration. Um, since the Reagan administration, they've been o- operating under a restraining order preventing them from doing it. You'll find no mention of that in these articles. You'll find only a brief I, mention I, I, of the I, fact I, that he's sending out I, the postcards. I thought you just mentioned an article that you read this in. I yeah, mean, this morning's New York point, Times. The, your point that, yeah. So well, I saw I saw several of them media. yesterday in other media. That's that's the media covering that. How about um, Barack Obama saying that the Keystone Pipeline would create only fifty permanent jobs, and that's all that it would do for the economy? That's true. And, you know, it was a blurb on Fox News. Nobody even cares about it. It was true. Permanent jobs, and that's it. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah, that's 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 true. You're you're right, and uh, you know. The fact that we're paying four bucks a gallon for gas now has nothing to do with the economic woes and, you know, bringing more oil. You do realize, Matt, that according to TransCanada, the company that's building the pipeline, this is not Greenpeace. This is the company that's building the pipeline. In an official press statement, they are saying that if the Keystone Pipeline construction is completed, it will probably raise the cost of gasoline in the United States by 10 to 20 cents a gallon, and it will certainly raise the cost of gasoline in the Midwest, because right now the Keystone Pipeline terminates in the Midwest, and they use it to refine gasoline, which they sell in the Midwest. When they get it down to the Florida co- or to the Gulf Coast, to the Texas coast, they're going to export all of that gasoline. In fact, they say right on their website, TransCanada will tell you who they're going to export it to. It's going to China, it's going to Brazil, it's going to England, it's going to Mexico. They already have the customers lined up. None of that gasoline is going to the United States. The people who own the factory, the plant down there that's going to refine it, one of the biggest ones, is the Koch brothers, who are funding all these right-wing Republicans. This is a scam, Matt. Look it up. All right, that's great. I mean, that's, that's not what I called about. I, 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 but I, my I, point I, is, if, if we had a liberal media in America, everybody would know that. The president finally had to acknowledge it, as you, no, as you mean, point out. Every, everybody, wouldn't, no, everybody wouldn't know that because... I think so, because this is, just, this is just another corporation trying to suck our country dry. The media is a business. Not enough people care about that to put it on TV, and that's why it doesn't get on TV. No, that's, the, the, they, liberal, do not, liberal they do not poll liberal media t- topics they before they cover them. And skew it. They take every issue and skew it left and give Barack all of the... Uh, I agree with you, Matt, that advantage. the media is a business. I with, um, what, and how about um, the gay marriage thing? Um, I agree with you that media is a business. Hang on just a second. I agree with you that media is a business, and that's the reason why... We're getting infotainment instead of news. And up until 1987, we had a way of dealing with that. We had a rule that the FCC had made back in the 1920s that said, if you want to use the commons, if you want to use the airwaves of our nation, the electromagnetic spectrum that is the property of we the people, of all of us, if you want to use that with a radio or television station, you have to operate, you have to program in the public interest. And what that meant was, the way that was interpreted, was that you had to actually provide news programming at the top of every hour. Or for radio and for television, you had to provide a news block, a half-hour, hour-long news block in the evening. And it had to be actual news, not spin, not infotainment, nothing about dancing dogs. In 87, Reagan did away with that. And the next year, the news divisions of the big three networks, which all used to be independent, And they used to be huge. They had bureaus all over the world because this is what their stations needed to keep their licenses. Those news bureaus all came under the entertainment vice presidents of each of the three networks. And they still are to this day. And that's why we have infotainment, because Reagan deregulated the, 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 the media.
essentially. And I think it was a disaster. Yeah, but it, I mean, constitutionally, he should have done what he did. No, there was it's nothing a, in the Constitution kind of about that. There's nothing in the Constitution that says if you want a license to own a television station, you, you get it, whether you program in the public interest or not. We're talking about the business end of it here, Matt, what you brought up. I mean, if you want to publish a newspaper and go out and not drop it on people's doors or hang it, you know, from the local the telephone pole, then you might have an argument. But I'm talking about using the public airwaves. Matt, thank you for the call. Thanks for listening to WCPT.